Johan, some last thoughts on this morning, this wonderful first first morning. Yeah, um, really interesting stuff from Rudolf here. Uh, and thanks for inviting me here. Uh, and as a background, I'm a hymenopterist, so I worked with tiny wasps a lot. But that was some time ago, and I've, for the last maybe 15 years, worked more with just taxonomic databases and uh, citizen science observations. So this is coming from my experience from that, rather. Um, so let me share my single slide. Just to show my, uh, so I just sat down and thought about future of species descriptions from my point of view. Uh, and then, yeah, of course, as, as I wrote down, you can see here more DNA based and sequences. Uh, but things that you haven't touched upon at all are things like fair and care principles, like things have to be findable and accessible. And also the care with thinking about the like indigenous peoples and countries which own the, the, these resources. Even if Rudolf now he's talking about describing new species within his own country, I guess. But there's a lot of issues like this we have to think about as well, I think more and more uh, with future species descriptions. Um, also, maybe making them more accessible to non-specialists and non-taxonomists. I mean, there's a lot of expert knowledge or acronyms here that not even I understand or I've just barely heard. So I think there are a, a kind of a different dimension here we can touch. And yeah, make them more standardized. Uh, so they're easily more I mean, in, read by different systems, uh, imported into GBIF or catalog of life, making them available to everyone. And I mean, then both, of course, nomenclatural acts and uh, just taxonomic statements changes what you are doing. So maybe we could start with registration in some way to have this the nomenclature acts going to faster into a catalog of life and GB becoming available to like conservation faster. And yeah, maybe we should have mandatory sequence like in mycology. Now we, we've talked mostly about entomology here, but we have lots of different diversity and I mean, not to mention unicellular species uh, where we don't really have much morphology to go upon. Uh, so I think those are things to think about as well, going into the future. So yeah, more DNA based, uh, and also once we develop new concepts, people thought, uh, talk about stable identifiers, but I think the, the, the real issue is actually to have them traceable. So things actually do change, and then you need to be able to trace what happened using stable identifiers but yeah two species turn out to be the same then well one has to go so to speak and yeah be more explicit by when we have new species hypothesis so we include not just a specimen like uh, emily was hesitant in describing species from just one specimen maybe it's unclear what the species hypothesis would be there What's the distribution? What's the, what kind of circumscription do you have for that species? So yeah, informative enough to be meaningful. And so we don't just end up with names attached to bad descriptions. And yeah, you have also touched about AI. AI assisted descriptions maybe. So it might be able to help us even if it doesn't do the job for us. I guess that's maybe three minutes. Thanks, Johan. That was a nice cap there um, and a nice summary as well.
yeah, for your insights. Um, I, I think there's no doubt there's, that AI is going to assist these processes. Um, they already are, depending on your definition of AI. Um, I think Rudolph uses clearly AI in some perspectives. Um, but yeah, thinking about how we can plug that little element into our processes and workflows is going to be huge. And I'm sure we'll talk about that more in the next uh, two, two and a half days. Um, we have about five minutes to wrap up before our first break this afternoon. Um, is there, I see Rudolph has posted multiple links and there is some links to um, care and fair and those concepts. Um, so is there any other quick observations before we break? Johan, if you want to share any links too, please feel free to the thing to share links that are inspiring you um, or that 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 you have felt uh, is are influencing your your views. Yeah, that would have been Karen fair to explain that, but if you said that Rudolf already did that. It's... Yeah, I think they were posted. Uh, Rudolf, one sec, I see your hand. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I do think we have to remember most of the biodiversity is not in countries that have tons of money. So whatever we do has to be uh, um, openly available. And we also have to keep in mind that uh, it can't be too expensive. Um, so although the stuff that I presented sounds like it's incredibly expensive, but uh, that's why we do things like entomoscopes. That's why we develop deliberately really cheap ways of doing um, sequencing. Um, they may not still be too expensive, but fortunately it is getting cheaper. Um, so I think this is what we have to keep in mind. It's not about um, just doing biodiversity science for the global north. I, I want to chime in on that and just again, shamelessly plug that that is one of the big reasons why we are, are doing everything possible to keep TaxonWorks open source and why we made it open source is so that it would cost nothing to use software like that in uh, in countries that that or in, in places where it can't where software can't be afforded and also that it makes the opportunity for providing um, you know, folks, folks in, in South America or, you know, wherever, wherever that re diversity is, they can then code, you know, provide code, provide feedback, provide impetus back into the tool. And so that's a big goal of us and a big philosophy of what we're doing. Debbie, I see your hand up. To add to this point and um, elaborate on what Rudolf and Johan are getting at, I would add water samples. There's like a world water sample day. There's this these kits sent out where anybody on the planet gets a little tiny vial. They can collect a water sample, um, share it. So making it possible for more people to participate in science in more ways. Uh, and it reminded me of understanding, reaching out a couple of years ago for a, asking someone to give a talk that was from Brazil. Something like half of the folks from Brazil don't have smartphones. So when we start thinking about things like iNaturalist, uh, ways in which the public can help us, thinking about that water sample idea and other ways in which people can help contribute to this, but to keep thinking about how this we can make these, make it possible. So thanks for pushing those points. Okay, I see Brian has said great session and there's been some some emote, emoticons agreement with that. I, I'm very thankful for everyone being here and kicking off our first day. Lots of uh, food for thought. We will reconvene in about an hour and a half, if I remember right. Um, That's correct. And we have coming up our three minutes, one slide. So if you were inspired and you want to do what Johan just did, we're excited to see what you have to say. Uh, and then Matt, what comes after the three minutes, one slide? So, so we basically have about a half an hour um, between when we get going again. And then mm -hmm. uh, there will be a conversation with um, iNaturalist, Scott Lowry for his coming. And we're going to have sort of an open Q&A with him for about an hour. Uh, there's been some recent integration uh, with TaxonWorks that we're exploring. 
And we want to hear from iNaturalists sort of um, their challenges, where they're trying to uh, move in the future. Um, there'll be lots of opportunity for, for, for conversation there. Um, so that'll be an hour of conversation with, with iNaturalists followed by, um, we have two hours scheduled for unconference style discussions, um, breakout rooms like Peter mentioned, et cetera, as well. Um, there'll be opportunities to ask to see features um, in TaxonWorks or have things explained, to talk with the rest of the TaxonWorks community that's here, um, or to just you know brainstorm on, on the needs that have come up out of this morning's discussion. So 